Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of today's Best Stock Picks. It's Thursday morning, December 10th, 2020. Uh, pretty interesting day in the market yesterday in the sense that we had a bunch of new day traders coming into the boot camp this week. And uh, as the market was uh, selling off yesterday, they were so used to watching the market go up pretty much every day <laughs> for the last couple of weeks, um, wanting to know what was wrong with the market. And I'm like, <laughs> relax. <laughs> we hit all time highs today. There's nothing wrong with the market. It's a little bit of profit taking. There's a lot of news going on behind the scenes. So I think really the point that I want to start out with today's um, today's stock picks with, <clears throat> as well as just trading uh, concepts, is that you always need to put price action in context, uh, which is kind of interesting because today we have a few trades that, that have broke out. Uh, and whether or not those trades are still good. We're gonna use uh, Philip Morris actually as a good example. We've discussed a couple of them recently um, where we had uh, LAZR, where we mentioned that a higher opening after a certain amount of price action led to the stock uh, being a good selling opportunity on a higher opening. We had another one yesterday in QS where we said the higher opening after a certain amount of price action uh, selling that higher opening was probably the smarter move yesterday. And both of those stocks sold off. Uh, about two weeks ago, we had the same situation in Boeing where the stock rocketed higher for roughly a couple of weeks. And then good news came out. Then the stock traded higher about $10 on the open. We said the same thing. This is a good morning to be looking to book profits on this most recent move because this is a clear sign that the selling is done for this particular move because the news is out at that point. So you know, the classic uh, buy the rumor and sell the news, there really wasn't a rumor down there to buy, but the price action showed us something was going on. And when the news came out, that was to sell the news. So what's the point of the whole thing? So the point of the whole thing today is that we really have to be, uh, if we wanna see our account grow month after month after month, we need to make sure that we put the price action that we're looking at in context for whether or not it's a good buy today uh, or is it a little bit too late? If it's a little bit too late, how do we uh, do what we call working the order where you don't go in there with um, what you might consider a bigger share size, uh, fully anticipating that maybe it's the, the third or fourth day after the stock has rallied and you're like, I love this stock, it's breaking out, it came up on my scanner, but that's not the optimal entry. So if that happens, you need to slow down a little bit with your risk and your share size uh, because that's the proper way to work in order that's already gone a few days in, into, the, um, into the move. Uh, and I think that's, I'm bringing it up because putting price action in context before you put the trade on, and even, even as far as how, if, if you wanna be buying the stock, how many days in a row, how many weeks in a row, how many months in a row has the stock been moving in your direction prior to putting that trade on? We've seen a few trades recently called out by newer traders in the bootcamp um, where the stock is actually at or near lows for the year uh, and wanting to start to um, uh, build a position in that stock. And this is something that's really important. Um, newer members especially uh, come in and say, it feels like every trade, as soon as I put the trade on, it starts moving against me. And then after they've been in the community for roughly, let's say a couple of weeks at the most, you start to understand what you're looking for. You start to understand order flow. You start to recognize the smart money. And, and the smart, I get asked all the time, what does the smart money mean? The smart money means it's, it's the, the market itself pushing a stock in a certain direction. And, and I call it the smart money because it's the obvious price action that we're looking for. Somebody, a bank, an institution, a hedge fund, it does, it, honestly, it doesn't make a difference who it is, but the smart money at that moment has control of that stock and their position that they're taking is larger than um, the opposite side. So let's say, for example, we're looking at bullish order flow. Whoever is pushing that stock, if it went from 50 to 60, their opinion right now is stronger than anybody else who has a, a different opinion. So the smart money is pushing that stock. So once you know the smart money and, and how to spot a stock and say, smart money has been in that stock for a while, I, I can have some conviction in that stock. Then the next piece of the context that you need, you need to understand how to read the tape. And reading the tape is, is not just one thing, you're putting together the pieces, you're saying, what is the market doing? What is the sector doing that I'm looking at? What is the individual industry group with that stock? Then you get a little bit more into how far and how fast has the stock moved recently? 
have I moved further away from the optimal entry? And if I'm close to the optimal entry, uh, what does that mean for share size and my expected profit target? So this is really what, if you're struggling right now, this is what separates somebody who's, who's, who loves to trade but is having a hard time with actually getting paid from somebody who, even if you have losing trades, you're, you're losing on good ideas. And then the next trade and the next trade and the next trade, eventually the odds, if you have an edge, are how profitable traders are made. Um, so my, my point is we actually had somebody in the, in the, uh, who's been in the bootcamp for a little bit now, um, just recently um, say that it feels like for a lot of other newer members that it's been a tough week. Uh, meaning the last five days of trading when he had mentioned this, uh, he goes, but I'm having a very good week. Uh, and I don't want to post this in the main community because I'm not sure if, if what's going on. And I said that tends to happen when you actually know what you're looking at and you work your tail off to get to the point where you're disciplined. And, you know, discipline actually has a really um, interesting connotation. It's it, Some people think like it's like you need to play these mind games and trade like a robot and that's not what discipline is. Discipline in trading means you've made this big list of what doesn't work and you stop doing that. <laughs> and that's really what discipline is. And, you know, newer traders are like, oh, I need to trade like a robot. I need to be like Spock from Star Trek. No, you just need to recognize why you aren't getting paid. Make a big list of those things that you do when you don't get paid. Stop doing those things and then do more of what your edge actually looks like. Uh, and that's really what the boot camp is all about. It's my job. It's my responsibility. I feel like I want to show you exactly what to look like because that's the big thing. And I'm not, hopefully I'm doing some of that here in, the, in these uh, videos on social media where I'm pointing you in a direction to say, this is what a really good idea looks like. And if you could have a visualization, if you understand up here what a really good idea looks like and something that's in your edge, something that you would expect the odds of my profit target being hit are much better than my stop loss over time. Not every trade. That's a big thing over time. Uh, then you wake up every day and you expect to make money. And that doesn't mean you will, but you expect to make money every day because you know what you're looking at. And you know, if you only take the trades that match your edge over time, you should come out on top. You should come out profitable, provided you manage the trade between entry and exit properly. And that has to do with setting your stop loss and building the position and that kind of stuff. And it's not complicated, but you do need to know what to do. <laughs> we talk about it all the time. It's more important to know what to do than it is to know what's gonna happen next. Because if you know what you're going to do, you're in control of that. And that's really where trading becomes fun again, because you are the reason you're getting paid. It's not, not a stock. We had one yesterday that exploded. Uh, I didn't personally trade it. It went from like 30 something to hundred something. Uh, I didn't trade it because I, I wasn't in control of that. I felt like, uh, as I normally do with stocks like that, that explode out of nowhere, I want to be in control. I want to be able to read the tape. I want to have a valid reason for being involved in that. Um, and that's the difference between having a long 20-year career like I do uh, and somebody who flames out and continues to uh, refund their account every couple of months because they're just not paying attention uh, to what's working and what's not. So if you want to cut that learning curve down dramatically, um, Join me in the bootcamp for, for such a tiny investment, uh, which you're probably risking more than that on just one individual trade. Uh, and you get 30 days and get everything, including my entries and exits. Uh, give yourself the gift uh, for the holiday. Give yourself an early gift and get on the other side and, and come into the community because we're so passionate about you wanting to succeed. Um, what we're showing here in these videos is really just, uh, it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Uh, of what I can do if, uh, if you make that investment in yourself. So how does that relate to today? What is that, what is that going on with today? So today, yesterday was the first day the market pulled back. After all-time highs, we closed on the lows and there was a lot of red on the screen yesterday afternoon. A few pockets of opportunity. We're actually getting long some stocks that um, while the market was at the lows, some of these stocks were at the highs. SFIX, which we called out yesterday, hopefully took advantage of that. We've been looking at some of these stocks the day after earnings and getting some nice follow through for the following week. Um, and there was some good trades in there. But today we're going to have a little different situation. Today we're going to have the market pulling back and a few stocks pulling back. The futures are kind of like flat right now, not, not really moving. We have uh, unemployment claims today. We have the um, ECB policy decision, which will be 7.45 a.m. our time. Uh, consumer prices at 8.30 and the stimulus package is still in the background. Not to mention <laughs> vaccine news versus pandemic news. So if you're a little bit... Um, 
if you're a little bit unsure about your trading right now, you have a reason to be. <laughs> There's a lot going on right now. And if you're overwhelmed, you're probably trying to do too much. So the, uh, the structure, the, the mentoring advice that we have in the, in the boot camp right now, which is narrow down your list until the picture gets a little bit more clear, focus on either individual sectors, individual industry groups, and don't worry about everything else in the market. Just pick those stocks that match your uh, resources, your skills, and make money here between now and the end of the year with a, maybe a little bit of a title list. Don't be chasing price action. And the big thing too is don't be chasing prices that were good um, a month ago, two months ago, because you have to, you have to, that's the big thing about order flow and reading the tape. You need to read the price action right now. That's obvious. So for example, the solar stocks were really good to trade about two months ago. They're not right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, JKS, if you're trading that, it actually hit a, a support level yesterday that if it breaks down, there's a lot of room to go to the downside. So we're going to keep an eye on that level today too. Um, and the electric vehicle stocks, NEO and XPEV, they were on fire for the for about five or six weeks and we traded the heck out of them. Uh, but then the tape changed. So we scaled back and now we're, we've changed how we're trading them, if we're trading them at all. And that's really what separates somebody who's like banging their head against the wall saying, what am I missing? And really what you're missing is structure and paying attention to what price action is doing. And then you, you have to be okay with leaving your, your money pot because the money pot, you know, it's got a hole in the bottom. And right now it's, it's not offering the right ideas. So now we drill down a little bit deeper and we're gonna look at some ideas. So you'll notice in today's list, they're kind of all over the place. It's not like we've been talking about where the, the those sectors or industry groups I just mentioned or the financials or energy stocks. Uh, now we're going down to a mixed list of stocks that have uh, really nothing to do with each other for the most part, because we're being stock specific now, narrowing the list. And that's what, that's what you wanna start to do. You wanna start to say there's certain opportunities when the market is obvious and everything is going up like July and August of this year. Uh, but now the tape has changed and pretty much from month to month, we're digging in, doing our scanning, reading order flow, reading the tape, and now finding these pockets of opportunity that we could trade for a couple of weeks. And as long as it's still good, uh, we'll, we'll continue to be looking to uh, buy those stocks and make money. And as we talked about in our coaching call on Monday, trading around a core position as it continues to move higher. Um, and then if that dries up, we continue to keep digging in. Every day we do our game plans like we're doing now, we're essentially going on a treasure hunt. And that treasure hunt is looking for new ideas. Now, the question that comes back all the time is how do you know when to stop trading that stock, like, like the solar stocks or the EV stocks? Uh, and it really comes down to when you start losing money, <laughs> when the stocks are really obvious and they're following through and you feel confident and you, you, know, you feel great. And my gosh, you went right up to our target and beyond. And it was fun. We moved up the trailing stop loss. Uh, when you get to that point, uh, that's obviously good, right? That's what you want. But then you get to the point where you're like, I put on that same trade twice and I keep losing money. That's when you step back and like, okay, the tape changed. Let me work my way into uh, the rest of my, let me go a little deeper into my, uh, into my list and see what happens. So we're going to head over to the charts. We're going to take a look at some price action. I know that was a little bit of a long intro, but I want to be honest with you. Sometimes we need this because you need to, you need to get your head back. You need to like say, okay, yesterday uh, I didn't recognize it. And you didn't forget how to be a trader because you need context. You need the context of the order flow. Did the tape change? And it's not you sometimes, you know, it's like that old breakup. Uh, <laughs> it's not you, it's me. Sometimes it is the market. Sometimes the market changes uh, and yesterday it changed a little bit. So we had to adapt how we were trading. And remember, preserve precious capital on those days that's a little bit tougher. There's nothing wrong with taking a step back. So we're gonna see some breakouts today. We're gonna to see a couple of stocks that have already reached their profit potential uh, and we wanna point them out. Um, and then we have a couple of stocks in a sector that was strong about, we called out early last week that have now pulled back for a couple of days. We're gonna to look to be buying some of those stocks today. So uh, let's head on over to the charts. We'll take a look and see some opportunity. Um, you can see here in the SPY pulled back yesterday. We're gonna get right into it. Uh, earnings today, Sienna has earnings prior to the market opening. Uh, doesn't look like anything happened yet. After hours today, we have Oracle, uh, Costco, which is a big one, Broadcom, and last but not least, Lulu, which we haven't traded Lulu in a while. The tape has changed a little bit, um, but I'm looking forward to that today. I do want to point out uh, Starbucks actually got an upgrade today. So it had good news yesterday after the market closed, um, predicting a strong year and 
the stock got a uh, outperformed target put on uh, from Calendar Company up at 112. So right now it's trading up roughly three dollars. So you still have about eight and a half, nine dollars, depending on where that opens. So I will absolutely be keeping an eye on Starbucks today for the next swing trade. Uh, when these stocks, most for the most part, have been getting upgrades, similar like Lulu actually, uh, no, excuse me, not Lulu, Neo, um, had a couple of upgrades. It started over here. Uh, when it was 15 and then there was another upgrade to um, I believe it was mid 30s and then another one at 40 but you can see the tape has changed this so we're going to keep an eye on Starbucks today um, one thing I, I also want to point out um, DraftKings DraftKings had this spike if you weren't watching the market intraday yesterday uh, just to give you an idea the daily chart doesn't really do it justice here's what happened intraday yesterday uh, and the news came out in the middle of the day and this is really the story here is uh um, New York online sports betting getting le potentially getting legalized and expanding. Uh, so that really affected DraftKings and Penn, uh, P E N N, Penn Gaming. So, what does that mean? It means two things, right? As you see, they both spiked at the same moment. Those stocks are in play right now with this potential news. That means that as a day trader, these are stocks that you should be looking at for potential volatility, but, 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 but. You need to be on top of making your decisions if they spike and do exactly what they did yesterday, which is coming all the way down, which is why I don't talk new traders through doing this because they really don't have the decision uh, muscles yet to get out of the trade if it pulls back right away. And this is a really good example. Um, so you need to have your experience level uh, honesty <laughs> before you trade these kind of stocks. However, um, they are in play right now on this story, and we'll see. We'll see. Was yesterday a sell the news type of story where, the stock, where both of those stocks start to roll over, uh, or are they uh, just igniting a potential new move higher, um, which is why I don't generally teach newer traders to uh, trade the news, but they're interesting to keep an eye on. We mentioned SFIX um, yesterday, uh, two days ago, expected it to be a really good trade after earnings. The gap was awesome. If you happen to trade this bullish U-turn, which we mentioned the day before. Um, so that was great for everybody who was involved in that one. But then yesterday, stock woke back up and we said, keep it again, right out of the gate from one day to the next, it needs to stay in your watch list. Uh, and yesterday, again, especially as a day trader, it was an amazing, amazing opportunity yesterday. I'm going to be looking for a follow through again today. Uh, a good setup that I like today is GRWG. It's one of my favorite setups where strong stock pulls back, consolidates, and gives us a really tight spot to manage risk and a really clear next move. We're looking for roughly $10 to $12 coming out of this. So we're going to be looking at a target coming out of this of around 42 if the stock gives us an entry signal. That's actually a big thing too. There's a difference between the entry signal and the entry. <laughs> the signal means it's here. The entry means it traded to a certain price to get in. We have to make sure we touch on that. Uh, FANG is in the list again today. You can see it's having a hard time at this 46 level. As long as it remains well bid above that level, I'm gonna stay long. Below that level is where the stop is. Uh, Capital One, actually, really nice punch. So I want to get to Capital One and Goldman Sachs. We've been looking at the financial stocks for a while now. I've been calling them out for a while. Uh, and this here is where we expect to follow through. We got a little pause here expecting follow through. Did not get it. We actually dipped back below the uh, breakout level. This has been a little bit challenging um, with, with the sideways price action. You really need to probably be watching these with moving averages as opposed to watching the tape or going out to a little bit higher time frame, as we said. So you can see on the higher time frame, they're a little more obvious. Goldman has a little bit of resistance up here around 250, but that's another part of reading the tape is understanding that there are certain ways to read a certain stock to become a little bit more obvious. FSLY, if you're a day trader right now, the stock has woke up. Um, not necessarily setting up as a longer term trade right now, but it, uh, consolidation, a spike, a consolidation, a spike. Yesterday was a consolidation. We're looking for another larger range day of price action today. Uh, I want to talk about one of the stocks that we talked about as far as if it gets to a certain level, it's profit taking. PM has hit that level where it had six, seven multiple well-bid days in a row, seven consecutive well-bid days in a row yesterday on that parabolic move was profit taking. So today's lower opening, if you happen to get a push higher off of today's lower opening, um, that would be profit taking for me. Uh, LV actually exploded again. Now it's three days past the optimal entry. So this is one of those situations where if you like the long, you need to work the order with less shares and then look for it to consolidate. 
couple of stocks that we're looking to trade on pullbacks today, uh, looking for them to test yesterday's low as support, NET, AMD, and last but not least, Xilinx is in the list as well as three stocks in the semiconductor sector that we mentioned early last week was strong. They did follow through and that they gave us a little bit of a pullback. There's some news in that sector about supply issues. We'll see if that was a natural pullback in those stocks or if it's a little deeper being affected because of that supply issue. So a lot to talk about. Look, everything that we talked about today, if you have, if you have a little bit lack of confidence right now, um, absolutely narrow your list down. Stop scanning all of the news, build a small tight list that you're comfortable with. Stick to that list uh, and don't worry about anything else in the market. I, I, I can promise you that if you make your list a little bit smaller, focus on that and only trade when your edge matches those stocks, uh, you'll have a lot more confidence because you're not all over the place. Your, your focus is right there uh, and, and you'll feel better because you're in control. You, you're not scattered. Uh, if you want some help with this, definitely click down and learn about the bootcamp. I'd love to see you on the other side. Have a great day, everyone.